for when he is raging, you know, you can feel the people know now that this man has risked his life for us. This is a man that has given his life because he showed them the wound, the bandage. I had gotten to realize, you know, in reading my Bible, that this man was really Joseph in his second advent. Joseph who his brothers had sold into Egypt. And it was Joseph who redeemed his brothers, who would have starved to death because of the famine in Egypt. And not only his brothers, but for the world in that time. And I saw in the man that this time he came not only with the physical corn to feed his people, but he came with the spiritual corn, which was the message that transcended to the four corners of the world. In 1978, Mali achieved what most Jamaicans would have thought impossible. The One Love concert at Kingston's National Stadium was the musical event of the year. Its motive was to promote peace between the warring gangs of both political parties. The show was attended by all of Jamaica's leading political figures. <coughs> essentially changed as a person at all. He was the same person all the time, essentially. When he had, when he got his, uh, his fancy car, BMW, you know, which he said was rightfully his, it stood for Bob Marley and the Wayland. But when he would drive into the ghetto, he would never lock the car. You know, he could just get out of it, and the windows open or whatever. He, he never separated himself from uh, people. And do you think they, enjoy his success and his material success as well. Very much so. Definitely. Because he was a, <clears throat> a generous hearted person. He wasn't a, he wasn't a mean spirited person. He was a very generous person. He kept about about four thousand people basically would would were living in some way through him is right. Mali turned the fifty six Hope Road into the headquarters of Tough Gun International, the name he gave to his Jamaican operations, and built a record pressing plant, workshops, and a recording studio. 